Good morning, folks. We have several things we're going to hit today, mostly weather related. We also have a look back at four big news days in a row that we hope you didn't miss. We are starting with the last 24 hours on our star. No big flares. Only eruption went off the polar crown near the departing limb. Activity is still in the low trough of the three-month variation cycle. But we did get an interesting amplification in the solar wind. It didn't produce geomagnetic storm activity, but reverberation is ongoing, and they do expect a denser stream to impact today. We will be watching. Before we get into our weather-related news today, the last four morning shows all had very important information on geomagnetic excursions. It's quite rare to have such a barrage of related information in such a short time frame, so if you missed any of those, click our channel name and find those videos on our homepage. Important background. Folks, we now have two storms of note straddling the Americas. One is rapidly intensifying in the Atlantic Basin. The other is what we've been watching off the west coast of Mexico. The first one is expected to be a dangerous system for the far eastern Caribbean before bending northward into the sea, while the track has not shifted for what is now a major hurricane in the Pacific. Mexico on alert there. Folks, this is a look at most of the Earth-observing satellite fleet. It doesn't have the higher orbiting ones like GOES, but even just these low orbital craft tell us just how many eyes there are in the Earth. This is where most of the atmospheric data is actually coming from. One of the most interesting is the newer lightning mapping capabilities of the ISS. They have begun to really put their focus on the lightning events after the last decade showed how much lightning strikes were increasing in frequency and power, something we've been covering and said to watch for more. They're firmly within that line of focus from several different satellites at the moment. They also use those eyes in the sky to map the ozone hole over Antarctica. Despite the drop in the pollution that was supposedly causing the drop in ozone levels, the ozone levels remain quite low, including all of the four most recent years. If you missed it before, our next book comes out Saturday. Pre-orders will begin for our easy version of the disaster cycle. This one is not written like a textbook as our previous books were, but it should be easier to understand. Don't forget to grab tickets to our upcoming event at Observer Ranch on November 18th. Close out the year with the observers. And lastly, we do have a bit of new merchandise in the store, and the most recent children's book is on sale. These kids' books make great holiday gifts and are an excellent way to get the little ones interested in space science. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.